This is a story that just came out on NPR. And this just goes back to how difficult it is for drug addicts and even former drug addicts to get into the workforce because companies simply do not trust these people. Many of the recovered addicts have rap sheets because, you know, when you are a drug addict, sooner or later you run out of money and then you turn to crime. The powerful pull of opioids leave many missing from U.S. workforce. Jonathan Guffey has chiseled youthful looks and at 32 does not have the haggard bearing of someone who has spent more than half his life hooked on opioids. That stint with the drug started at 15 and ended, he says for good, 22 months ago. He has a job working with his family in construction, but his work history is pockmarked by addiction. I've worked in a couple of factories for a short amount of time, probably just long enough to get the first paycheck to get high off of, Guffey said. I met Guffey at a Road to Redemption, a weekly free dinner and support meeting at a church in Muncie, Indiana. For people in or seeking recovery, he says his habit was enabled by others, family, friends, and even a boss at a factory where he once worked. There were plenty of times when I wouldn't go to work there and my boss would call me and he wouldn't even say anything about work. He would just want more opaques, pills, or whatever it was that I could get at that time, Guffey says. So he was a junkie and so was his boss. Economists estimate 1.5 million work age people are missing from the labor force, not working or looking for work. It is not clear to what extent the country's heroin and opioid painkiller plague is affecting declining participation, especially among primetime age men, those 25 to 54. And that's the same age group that commits the most suicide. But in many communities such as Munchie, it is clear that the proliferation of opioid abuse is having a big enough impact for employers and the community to take notice. Those with opioid addictions tell strikingly similar stories in which work takes a back seat to an intensifying compulsion for the drug. They're sleepy on them and horribly sick when they aren't. They said the physical impact is worse than the other drugs. Those I interviewed described a deepening alienation that ultimately includes both family and work. In lieu of jobs, most say they eventually supported themselves by dealing drugs. I lived and breathed drugs and shunned both work and uh, relationships, says Jennifer Smith, who shows me a mugshot of herself taken six months ago, just before she got sober. In it, she is thinner with dark bags under her eyes, looking a decade older than her 40 years. She says that before the opioids, she worked as a bartender and went years without a job once she started using. It feels like I lost a lifetime, she said. Opioid use is less common and the uh, aggregate less lethal than alcohol. But the data shows opioids affect users' work life more. Research from the National Safety Council or the NARC research group at the University of Chicago shows opioid users miss twice as many days of work than those with alcohol addiction. According to Princeton economist, Alan Kruger, 
47% of prime age men not in the labor force use pain medication and two thirds of that subgroup use prescription drugs. Melissa Wallace, ex-husband and three children all wrestled with various addiction. She also owns a small cleaning business that hires some people in recovery. So she has seen how the disease affect both workers and employers. There is the trust issue, she says. Even if they're clean, I can trust this person in people's homes or businesses. Well, that depends. Oftentimes they relapse. So there's a reliability and are they going to show up? Wallace works for Roads to Redemption. Says opioid addiction strikes the rich, poor, and the promising. I know a lot of kids' friends have fallen into the trap, in and out of jail, she says. Kids that if you would have told me 10 years ago would have end up, ended up in jail, I would have been like, no way. She might as well be speaking about Karen Sexton. Sexton is a tall 23-year-old from an upper class, uh, uh, upper middle class family whose perfect high school grades landed her a full ride college scholarship. And that's where I met heroin, she said. Next thing I know, um, cocktail waste, um, a cocktail waitressing in a gentleman's club and it was instant money. And those are the type of things I would have never imagined myself doing. She dropped out of college. She says among her circle of a dozen high school friends, seven are dead of opioid overdoses. See? See, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, and personally, I believe they're undercounting the numbers on an annual basis too, or related car accidents or medical crisis. Sexton sobered up a month ago only to confront a felony possession charge that might cost her a nursing assistant's license. The only thing remaining of her career plans. What's more, she says it might mean she won't be able to go back to school possibly ever if these charges stick. Oh, they won't. I will not be able to get any federal loans because they won't give them to felons, Sexton says. Oh, it don't matter. They'll wipe her record clean and it'll be like nothing happened. A family point out, it is not just the addicted whose careers suffer. I met Roger and Katia, Katiana Johnson on their front lawn, strewed with children's toys, evidence they've been uh, thrust back into parenting as they care for their two grandkids. Their 26 year old daughter, Destiny, uh, went to jail on drug charges, but they describe her as once hardworking a teenager who previously had a job at the same company as her father. She worked with me twice when she was 16 years old and was going to school, says Roger Johnson. So I mean, once this drug gets a hold of you, it brings you down. Well, a lot of black grandparents had to take their kids when their mothers and fathers went to jail during the crack um, epidemic. I remember that. Katiana Johnson says that she missed working days driving Destiny to rehab and doctors and that dealing with opioid addiction interrupted her own plans. Once you raise your kids, you want to be able to retire or something, she says. We weren't able to. We went ahead and took on our grandkids, she said, before being interrupted by someone's yelling, hey, in front of the house. 
It's Destiny Johnson released unexpectedly early because she tells her parents the jail was overcrowded. Her mother, who works the overnight shift at a local children's home, wears an express wears an expression that is both happy and worried because Destiny wasn't given a shot to control her opioid cravings. And once again, Katiana Johnson is rethinking her work schedule. Kind of makes me want to stay home tonight just to make sure she doesn't use, she says, adding that she'll lean on other family members if necessary. So I guess that's her drug addict daughter. Destiny Johnson surveys the doghouse where she slept when her parents evicted her for using in the house. She points to the side entrance of her parents' home, which is blocked by bags of her old clothes and other items she used to drag around when she was strung out and homeless. She says sobriety in jail made her realize she wants a good job, but that in the past addiction meant she was also hooked on making the quick buck. I'd rather go and trick, she says, Look, looking at me, I don't know if you know what that is, but you know, have sex for money to get my drugs because it was a lot faster and easier. You have to wait a whole week for a paycheck. No addict wants to wait that long to get their drugs. Katiana, Katiana Johnson urges her daughter to take it slowly, to focus on recovery before worrying about applying for jobs. Rejection, she worries, might make Destiny resort to using drugs again. All right. So there you go. So whether they're an active drug addict or a recovered drug addict, it is a problem in getting employment. And there's a lot of people out here right now that are not eligible for employment because of their drug addiction. And as you can see, this whole article highlighted all cocazoids. Please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. And if you can donate to my channel, please do. And, and also, if you can make a contribution towards the Hurricane Irma Fund for Florida, I would deeply appreciate it. Peace, family.